Thank you. Uh, first, I wish to thank the organizers for putting together an excellent uh, conference as well as uh, a long neutrino program. It has been very exciting. So I was asked to talk about uh, neutrino model building, which I'm very happy to do. So here is the current knowledge of uh, uh, the three neutrino oscillation uh, from experiments. We have seen this before. Uh, the question that uh, I would like to address today is uh, where does uh, this, uh, this, where do these data take us? from uh, the perspective of an underlying theory of neutrino masses. So in this regard, it is uh, uh, good to point out that there are certain unknowns, namely the uh, ordering of uh, the mass ordering of the neutrino, the CP violating phase and the lightest neutrino mass. I mentioned this because if we have a theory uh, that explains this data, um, it could be tested in the future by its prediction for uh, these uh, currently unknown parameters. So this is a rough uh, outline of the talk. Uh, this is a possible roadmap to neutrino model. This has uh, many components from the oscillation data alone. Uh, we are not sure which path to take. Uh, so I have listed the various possibilities that have been discussed in the literature. Uh, neutrino mass could be generated at a very high scale. It could be at the weak scale, or it could be at the sub-GEV scale. Neutrinos could be Majorana particles. It could also be a Dirac particle. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, each case could be combined with uh, this scale of the mass generation. Some of the features of uh, this different uh, path is that in high scale theories, it is very difficult to test directly uh, the underlying uh, new particles. Uh, however, they may leave behind some uh, certain relationships called some rules. This could be tested in neutrino oscillations. Uh, in the weak scale scenario, there could be collider signals related to neutrino mass generation. Uh, there could be observable charge lepton flavor violation and also a non-standard neutrino interaction. In sub-GEV scale neutrino physics models, uh, a, an important constraint is provided by Mason decay. If uh, the particle that is generated in the neutrino mass uh, is below the Mason mass, then it could, uh, it could actually give very strong constraint. One could also get charge lepton flavor violation as well as non-standard neutrino interaction. Coming to this side, whether the neutrinos are Dirac or Majorana, I actually would like to spend a few minutes on the possibility that the neutrino is a Dirac particle. This is, uh, after all, an experimental question. We, uh, many of the theorists have uh, some prejudice that most likely the Majorana particle, uh, but that is a good prejudice, but it has to be ultimately settled, settled by experiment. So I will discuss some possible ways of uh, understanding small neutrino mass in the context of Dirac neutrinos. And obviously the main difference is that uh, Majorana neutrinos could lead to neutrino left double beta decay. And uh, if there is a strong connection with the uh, baryon asymmetry through leptogenesis in the case of Majorana neutrino. And uh, in this picture, I can add additional ingredients and I can add it to the left side, to the right side. And I will uh, touch upon a few of these uh, ingredients. One is the grand unified symmetry. Uh, there could be connection between neutrino oscillations and the other hallmark prediction of grand unification, which is proton decay. Uh, there could be flavor symmetries uh, operating on the neutrino sector. There could be flavor symmetries jointly acting on the neutrinos as well as the quark and leptons. Uh, that could constrain the parameters the, uh, of the oscillations. There is also uh, potentially dark matter connection, dark matter neutrino connection. Uh, this, uh, we already heard some uh, discussion about that. I will actually, this is very interesting, but uh, due to lack of time, I will not discuss uh, uh, in this, uh, today, this connection. Uh, so the plan for me is to not to uh, build one model and uh, study its consequences, but I would like to uh, 
take an overall look at these various possibilities. So I'm not going to uh, push for one model. Uh, and as we will see uh, in the subsequent uh, uh, discussions. So the neutrino oscillation data can be all explained in terms of this uh, standard model effective field theory. Uh, of course, uh, this is already, if you have to go to the effective field theory, uh, we are already saying that, well, there is no new physics beyond the standard model. Now, the, the lowest effective operator one can write is, everyone knows, is the so-called Weinberg operator. It is a dimension five operator, so it's part of the non-renormalizable sector of the standard model. Uh, and it is suppressed by one power of an inverse, inverse mass scale. And uh, this is denoted here, uh, operator one, this is the lowest higher dimensional operator one can write. Uh, this kappa, uh, kappa times the electroweak vacuum expectation value squared will give the neutrino mass. So the oscillation data can be fully understood in terms of this flavor structure and the magnitude of this, uh, this coefficient, the Wilson coefficient kappa a. And uh, from current data, the largest inverse value of this kappa is about 10 to the 14 GeV. So a neutrino oscillation experiment are already could be argued. They are uh, probing energy scales much above the weak scale. That is very interesting. And there is a possible connection with the neutrino mass uh, with uh, the unification of forces because the scale is, seems to be close to the scale where uh, the gauge couplings unify. So that was in terms of the effective field theory, uh, but I want to kind of argue that uh, it would be a mistake to stop at the effective field theory description. Uh, it should not be the goal uh, because this has to be determined by experiment again. What if neutrinos are Dirac particles? Then this uh, dimension five operator is not the right uh, way to uh, think about it. Uh, what if the neutrino masses arose from higher dimensional operators such as dimension seven or dimension nine operators. Again, uh, this would, uh, the Weinberg operator would be not the relevant operator. And this has to be settled experimentally. And I will give examples where these things happen quite naturally. <clears throat> now, even when the scale of new physics that uh, generates neutrino mass is beyond reach, uh, EFT, uh, well, opening up the effective field theory operator can give us new insights. An example is a well-known example is the idea of leptogenesis. This occurs in the type one seesaw mechanism. If you if we left the Weinberg operator and did not open it up, uh, we fit the neutrino data to the Weinberg operator, we would miss out on this phenomenon of leptogenesis. So here is the, the standard type one seesaw where we introduced, we saw this many times. The effective Lagrangian is the Weinberg operator with one power of the right-handed neutrino that goes in here. Uh, now the light neutrino mass goes like some you cover coupling squared uh, divided by uh, the right-handed neutrino mass. If I choose the you cover coupling to be of order one, uh, then the mass of the right-handed neutrino uh, is of order 10 to the 14 GeV. But no one tells, at least in this picture, no one tells us that the Yukawa coupling should be order one. If it is uh, 10 to the minus three, you lower the scale quite a bit appropriately. And uh, there, are, there are discussions about uh, looking for uh, this uh, type one seesaw, right handed neutrino at colliders. But it will be challenging because these are our complete singlets of the standard model. <clears throat> I mentioned about the leptogenesis scenario. Uh, if, uh, since in this picture, uh, right-handed neutrinos are Majorana particles, it can decay to a Higgs and a lepton, can also decay into anti-Higgs and anti-lepton. So a lepton asymmetry could be generated through this uh, uh, loop diagrams. And all three conditions of Sakharov in order to generate baryon asymmetry dynamically are satisfied. Uh, B violation occurs already in the weak interaction process through the Celeron process. And the Yukawa interactions of the uh, neutrino uh, violate both charge conjugation and CP. And the out of equilibrium uh, condition is provided by the expanding universe. The lepton asymmetry could be computed in the approximation, uh, in the decay of the lightest right handed neutrino. And uh, very naturally, it comes out to be of order 10 to the minus six. That is the needed value 
for explaining the baryon asymmetry for a ten to the minus ten. Uh, and uh, so this is a very nice picture, even though it is very difficult to test it directly. Everything seems to fit together in that type one system mechanism. There could be indirect tests by establishing that neutrinos are Majorana particles, and also by uh, measuring CP violation uh, in neutrino oscillation. These are not, uh, these will not just uh, tell us what the uh, baryon asymmetry of the universe is, but these are, uh, these are related to the generation of baryon asymmetry in the universe in, via Lapsch genesis. Now, the, there are some cousins to the type 1 CISA where uh, we replace the uh, mediated particles by either a triplex scalar or a triplex fermion. Uh, the effective operator is still the Weinberg operator. If you look at, for example, the triplex scalar, uh, it contains charged particles. Specifically, it contains a uh, charge two particles. Uh, this charge two particles can decay to same sign dilepton. It could also decay to two Ws of the same sign. Uh, if we measure uh, this particle could be produced at the LHC, uh, if we see both the K-modes, we would be establishing that lactone number is violated. Uh, sometimes it is uh, stated uh, that we see the same sign di lactone signal that is a measure of lactone number violation, but that's not quite true. You have to establish that there are two uh, different final states with uh, different lactone number. Then we would have established lactone number is violated and uh, uh, and this would be actually a good way to uh, establish that neutrinos must be Majorana particles. Uh, what about Dirac neutrinos? Uh, Dirac neutrinos are completely consistent with the oscillation uh, data. In fact, uh, oscillation data uh, do not distinguish between Dirac and Majorana neutrinos. You might consider what about these extra degrees of freedom uh, that could be problematic in the early universe or, uh, or in, the astro in the astrophysical setting. But it turns out that the, the spin flip transitions always goes like mass of the neutrino over energy of the neutrino squared. Uh, therefore, the, the rate is highly suppressed compared to the weak interaction rate. So this also, everything seems to be completely consistent. <clears throat> and the main difference is that uh, if we see neutrino less double beta decay, uh, then the, it is, uh, we know that the neutrino is not a Dirac particle. But assuming that it is a Dirac particle, it would be nice to understand why, why it is so light. Uh, the electron is a Dirac particle, the top quark is a Dirac particle. Their masses are much, much higher compared to the neutrino mass. I want to show that there exists models where this happens in a natural way. Then what about the baryon asymmetry generation? There is a mechanism which I won't discuss here in detail. It is called Dirac leptogenesis, suggested by these people. Uh, in the event that uh, neutrinos are Dirac particles, there is a way to kind of extend the idea of leptogenesis. And uh, the key point that was pointed out in this paper uh, is that uh, even when lepton number is conserved, you could generate a left-handed lepton asymmetry and a right-handed lepton asymmetry. And uh, the left-handed lepton asymmetry would be washed out by the Sphaleron process, whereas the right-handed asymmetry will survive, provided that the left and right transition is suppressed. Uh, and for a Dirac neutrino, it actually is ideal because the mass flip uh, does not br bring in the right-handed neutrino into thermal equilibrium in the early universe. So this is, a, I think, an interesting way uh, of uh, understanding baryon asymmetry. Okay, I want to talk about one particular model a uh, little bit. This is an old model actually uh, suggested for understanding parity violation by Lee and Yang in 1956. It's called the, these days it is called the mirror model. Uh, this has been developed for neutrinos by these people and uh, there is a large amount of literature that follows this. Basic idea is that there is a standard model sector where we live, and there is also a mirror sector, which is a replica of the standard model sector. Every particle is duplicated there, and the gauge interactions are also duplicated. So these uh, lepton prime are uh, the mirror sector particles, and notice that there is a mirror neutrino prime, a mirror neutrino, 
So in this context, one can write, an, we cannot write a Dirac master because uh, L and L prime transform under different gauge symmetries. Uh, however, one can obtain this kind of an operator, very much like the Weinberg operator, but now applied to a Dirac neutrino. And the mass of the neutrino is some vacuum expectation value, the electrovic valve times the valve of the mirror electrovic sector divided by some cutoff scale. So this, I think, is a model is somewhat elaborate, but it's, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, proposed on completely different grounds to understand origin of parity violation. Uh, and uh, there is a nice way of understanding the smallness of neutrino mass. Now, uh, as uh, I think Andre talked about it in his talk on Monday, uh, uh, the quantum gravity is uh, suspected that to break all global symmetries. So in addition to this, one might wonder why not get the ordinary Weinberg operator suppressed by the Planck scale. That could happen. In that case, the neutrino would be not exactly a Dirac neutrino, it would be a pseudo Dirac neutrino. Uh, there are strong constraints on pseudo Dirac neutrino. Uh, but this context, I want to suggest that one could gauge B minus L, then the Weinberg operator is suppressed. In fact, one can use the uh, scale, the breaking of the B minus L symmetry uh, is a free parameter, it's a free knob. You can adjust uh, the pseudo directness of the neutrino uh, the, any way you wish. So this is a very nice model, not just for Dirac neutrinos, but also for uh, possibly pseudo Dirac. And the pseudo direct neutrinos recently have got uh, more attention. They can be tested in flavor composition, ice cube neutrinos. They could be, I think we hear today later by Ivan on the connection to neutrino uh, from supernova neutrinos. Uh, so that's an interesting model. Uh, a second direct neutrino model uh, is originate from left right symmetry. Left right symmetry is again an attempt to understand the origin of parity violation. Uh, the right-hand neutrino must exist in, that, in those models because they are part of the, well, left and right should be completely symmetrically treated. Uh, one version of it goes by the name universal seesaw. This was suggested by these people quite some time ago, Davidson and Wally. Uh, what they say is that, what they said is that if, if in this left-right symmetric model, uh, you could, choose a very simple Higgs system. You have a doublet of Higgs that breaks the electrovic symmetry. And there is another doublet of Higgs that breaks the SU2 right symmetry. If that's the case, that's the only Higgs particle employed, then in order to generate the masses of quarks and leptons, uh, there must be some kind of a seesaw mechanism. So the uh, up quark will mix with a vector-like up quark and you get a mass matrix which looks like that. Uh, which is nice because now the light fermion masses are given by the CIFA mechanism. And uh, it uh, kind of explains a little bit why certain Yukawa couplings are uh, the, the, what they are. They, you don't have to choose uh, Yukawa coupling to explain the electron mass to be 10 to the minus five. You can live with something like 10 to the minus two is good enough. Uh, and this model can also potentially solve the strong CP problem without needing the axiom. So it has several good features. It turns out that in this model, I think we, I wrote a paper long ago and uh, we have kind of updated it recently. Uh, the, the, what happens is that if, if you look at the vector-like fermion, there is no neutral vector-like fermion, then the neutrino becomes a Dirac body. Uh, so this is how the neutrino mass comes in this model. It comes through a loop. Uh, left-handed neutrino going to right-handed neutrino through a left-right W boson exchange. And this left-right W boson exchange, they don't mix at tree level in this simple model. Uh, however, through top and bottom loop, they mix. So this was suggested some years ago, but uh, recently we looked at the uh, oscillation phenomenology in this specific model. And uh, this fit here shown is, uh, this is from a forthcoming paper. Uh, we sh could show that uh, there are four benchmark points. You can accommodate normal hierarchy, inverter hierarchy, and, uh, and also the CP violation. Uh, we, there is enough freedom to fit any value that uh, one would like. Okay, so I'm, let me change topic a little bit and go to high scale and Madirana neutrino. Uh, this follows from 
uh, unification. Unification is very nice. All the particles are uh, in, in this SO10 theory, they're all put together, including the right hand neutrino. And uh, in SO10 theory, you, you're allowed to have an intermediate scale. This is uh, here taken to be the Pachi Salam symmetry. So unification can be explained. Now, interesting thing for neutrinos is that it, this is a framework which treats quarks and leptons uh, together. And if you look at the group theory of uh, SO10, uh, the ordinary fermions belong to the 16 dimensional spinner representation. And uh, this tells us what Higgs to use. And uh, if you use only two Higgs, there are, uh, this is the entire Yukawa sector. It uh, fits on one line and it's supposed to generate all the masses for quarks, uh, up quark, down quark, charged leptons, uh, and neutrinos. And here is the detail. This is how it splits up into different combination. And uh, this was studied. There is a long history of that. We looked at it long ago when uh, last mixings were not required. Uh, but after Supercamiacande came up with the uh, atmospheric neutrino data, uh, this group, the Trieste group, actually pointed out that this model can fit uh, all the uh, last mixing angle. Uh, it turns out that there are 12 parameters and seven phases, and we have to fit 18 observables. This now includes all the quark masses, charge lepton masses, CKM mixing angles, and neutrino mixing angles. Uh, and the first, uh, the non-trivial point here is that you can have last neutrino mixing coexist with small quark mixing. This is highly non-trivial, I think. Uh, and then theta one three was uh, uh, predicted. And this is from a paper of 2005, sine squared two theta one three around 0.08. And uh, when, uh, when Diabe announced in 2012, uh, their measure, measurement value, uh, many of the people who worked on this uh, uh, assortment model were quite happy because uh, it could have been ruled out, but actually is uh, quite consistent with the Diabe data. Here is the best fit from my recent work. Uh, we assume either supersymmetry or non-supersymmetry. Uh, this, this table shows that all the entire quark and lep lepton spectrum, including neutrino masses and uh, mixing angles uh, can be realized consistently within the model. So then the obvious question is what about the CP violating phase? The Dirac phase, actually we looked at it because it would be nice to uh, constrain it, but this is the chi-square distribution for Dirac phase. So it, we cannot make a robust prediction for that. Because if it were measured at some, well, the best fit was corresponding to the deepest minimum, but we can afford to give, go to some next to uh, lowest minimum and still get a good fit. So there is no clear prediction for the CP violating phase. Uh, what we do have a prediction for is uh, because it came from a unified theory, there are predictions for proton light. Uh, the lifetime itself, there are some large uncertainty, but if you look at the branching ratio for proton lifetime, it may sound futurist, futuristic, futuristic, but uh, it is true that uh, once we, once uh, proton lifetime is measured and the branching ratios are known, the model can be tested. <clears throat> okay, the last topic I want to talk about is uh, uh, something that happens at TV scale, uh, the idea of a radiative neutrino mass generation. Uh, here, it's an alternative to the standard seesaw. Uh, the neutrino masses arise through quantum correction. Smallness is explained by the loop and chiral suppression. There are many models with uh, one loop, two loop, three loop, etc. Uh, here is a list of operator, leading operators going beyond the Weinberg operator, which carries lepton number equal to two. Uh, so one can take any one of these operators, open up and construct, maybe in more than one way, and construct radiative neutrino mass models. The simplest one is the operator called O2, which is a dimension seven operator. Uh, this is realized in the Z model, which was proposed in around the same time as the seesaw mechanism. Uh, what it is is that you have a second doublet of Higgs and a charge scalar, and uh, neutrino masses arise through this uh, loop diagram. Now, uh, Wolfenstein, soon after this uh, proposal, uh, suggested that there should be a discrete symmetry, uh, in which case the neutrino mass matrix becomes like this. Uh, it is currently ruled out. 
but for a long time, this was a very popular neutrino mass matrix. Uh, this predicts the uh, solar angle to be maximal, but uh, after Camelon came up with their data, this model has been excluded. I think it is a, a progress. Uh, neutrino experiments are testing models of uh, neutrino mass. So some recent work within the same context without the Z2 symmetry, one can fit all the oscillation data within the Z model quite well. So these are some uh, benchmark points. And uh, the, the first column here actually is the uh, electron neutrino interacting with the electron. This is muon neutrino interacting with the electron, et cetera. And this is uh, interesting because this model provides uh, significant non-standard neutrino interactions. So I want to show this is a fit from this paper uh, for within the Z model, uh, the four, uh, four be benchmark points are shown. They are consistent with the new fit shown in different planes of the mixing angle. So it's a viable model. And one can look at uh, uh, in what other ways can, uh, outside of uh, traditional neutrino oscillation, where can this show up? Now, this model, because the neutrino mass is generated uh, at a relatively low scale, could lead to large non-standard interaction parameterized by these uh, epsilon parameters. So within the model, this is the, there are, this is the charge current NSI. So there are two charge scalars, and they mediate uh, this uh, uh, NSI. And we looked at a variety of constraints. I list all the constraints that if we are doing neutrino mass model building at the TeV scale or below, we have to worry about all these, uh, the electrophoric precision, uh, charge lepton fiber violation, lepton universality, WDK, tau lifetime, direct searches, et cetera. And uh, here is one of the mass of the charge scalar versus the branching ratio on E nu on this side and tau nu on this side. You see that uh, current experimental uh, accelerator searches allow for the mass to be as low as uh, 100 GeV. Uh, this bump is the uh, exclusion region from LSC using their various searches for such uh, charge particle. And uh, the diagonal NSI non-standard interactions uh, of uh, parameterized here as epsilon EE, mu mu, and tau tau uh, can be significant in this model, consistent with all the other experimental constraints. For example, epsilon tau tau could be, without using neutrino oscillation data, it could be as large as about 30% within the model. On the other hand, the off-diagonal NSI is more constrained from charge lepton flavor violation and uh, is uh, uh, below a percent in this model. <clears throat> now, the, you can do the same exercise with the laptop work. We heard it from earlier talks. Uh, this may also be interesting for explaining some of the uh, B anomalies. In this case, uh, yeah, here is a summary. We analyzed some 20 different models and looked at the NSI predicted by each model. And uh, the Z model gives the largest of this NSI among these uh, studied models. And you can also see that uh, off-diagonal NSI, for example, epsilon E mu is highly constrained because of mu to E gamma and mu to three E constraints. But some of them are allowed to be at the level of uh, 30, 40%, especially epsilon tau tau. Now, <laughs> the uh, neutrino mass can also be induced through light mediators. This has become more popular in recent years. Part of the reason is that in this uh, uh, neutral current uh, dimension six operator, uh, the once you complete it, make it in SU2 invariant form, you could get large uh, charge lepton fiber violation. That is somewhat diminished if you have low mediators. So <clears throat> with Alex, Pedro, and uh, Irina, we looked at a, a particular model of this type. We gauged the third family B minus L, and uh, we made a complete model out of that. And the uh, parameter space that uh, we found where we got large epsilon tau tau is when the gauge was on as a mass of order 100 MeV, and the gauge couplings over 10, 10 to the minus three. It also turns out, and actually we are looking at it in more detail now, the third right-handed neutrino could be a sterile neutrino, which would be relevant for uh, 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 the short baseline anomalies. Here is a plot of uh, in the plane of the coupling versus mass. 
we have to worry about a lot of flavor constraints, atomic parity violation, DD bar mixing, et cetera. But after putting it all together, uh, this uh, limit of about 50% uh, on epsilon tau tau was still consistent within the model. Uh, there are many other models with, uh, which aim to obtain large uh, non-standard neutrino interaction. The main challenge is to control the charge lepton flavor violation. And many in the audience have actually worked on it. Uh, one idea was to use both the dimension six operators and the next dimensional operator, which is dimension eight, and have some kind of a cancellation between the two. Uh, light mediators help. There are several papers. Uh, many of uh, many in the audience have uh, worked on it. Uh, another related question that I did not talk about here is that how could these uh, models be tested at colliders? For example, monojet signals at LSC uh, could be one way of uh, correlating the neutrino mass model uh, and, uh, and LSC physics. So I come to the end of my talks. Uh, effective field theory description is good, but it cannot be the end goal. Uh, it will be inadequate. Grand unification provides powerful tool to interconnect neutrino sector with the quark sector. Neutrinos could be the rock particles. Interesting models do exist. Uh, or neutrino mass could be generated through higher dimensional operators than the Weinberg operator. They can lead to TV scale interesting new physics, which could be tested. Thank you. Very nice talk. We have questions. Yeah. So for those of us who are who still love SO10 in some form, can you make a comment or maybe just expand on getting large angles in neutrinos versus small angles for quarks and yeah, the I'm quark and, and like it seems like it's a very non-trivial uh, general. Property. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the system is uh, highly nonlinear. This, uh, let me show this again. Yeah, this system is highly nonlinear, so I, it's uh, not easy to write simple analytic formula. But uh, I will give one one piece of argument, which I think is uh, understandable in simple way. Uh, <clears throat> when we extrapolate the B quark mass, the bottom quark mass, and the tau lepton mass they seem to meet together at some gut scale. Now, if at the gut scale, mb is equal to m tau, then what happens is that in the neutrino sector, the 3-3 three, three diagonal entry goes to zero. Uh, therefore, even though, even if the small mix, uh, the off diagonal entry is small, you get an enhancement in the atmospheric neutrino mixing angle. I oversimplified it, but this is, this is how uh, you, one is able to obtain uh, both last mixing in one sector and a small mixing on the other sector. So that pushes you towards some class of models, I guess, within the SO10 framework. Well, no, I think this, uh, if you have two, um, uh, two symmetric Yukawa coupling matrices, if you try to explain all the masses, I think the same feature will show up. That is, uh, it is derived in, within SO10, uh, but if you have any other model which has two Yukawa matrices which explains everything, I think this feature should remain. Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, I haven't really thought much about the topic, but in the universal seesaw with the mirror sector, do you have any ways one can test for the existence of the singlet state? So <clears throat> it wasn't clear to me that the, the mass should be large. But... Yeah, so what happens in this model, in the universal CISA model for, for a Dirac neutrino, uh, the, you have a higher dimensional operator which, uh, which uh, gives you small neutrino mass. In addition, the neutrino mass is suppressed by this uh, two loop factor. But if you look at the scaling of the neutrino mass with the say right-handed W mass, it turns out that uh, the scaling goes like uh, the W mass was uh, divided by one of these heavy vector-like quarks. So we are not able to constrain 
uh, the mass of the right-handed W by requiring that the neutrino Dirac mass should be certain value. So the, it's only the ratio that is constrained. So we could, uh, the, the right-handed symmetry could be at uh, 10 to the 10 GeV, and uh, still we could get a very light Dirac neutrino. Oh, but there are no singlets in this case. I see. In this case, uh, uh, the, the, yeah, that's a key point in this case. Uh, although, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, although it is called universal FIFA, there is no analog of the singlet in the right hand, in the, uh, in the heavy sector. But maybe it was in the slide before this one where you have the mirror sector. Yes. Yeah, in this in, sector, yeah. Right. So this is also a Dirac neutrino case. Yes. So is there a singlet state? Here that you could look Yes, for. it is a singlet under the standard model, that, but however, it carries this mirror quantum number. It is this new prime. But uh, how about N? Hmm? N, your EV completion of the Weinberg operator. No, this is it. There is no, uh, oh, oh, I see. You mean this, uh, yeah, this will yeah. be a singlet, correct. Uh, in order to get this operator, one needs uh, additional stake, but which are uh, much uh, heavier in mass. Okay, so uh, you assume it's very heavy. Is that... They are, they have to be, yeah, they would be, they could be as heavy as uh, 10 to the 10, 10 to the 12 GeV. That's unfortunate. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Any other questions? All right, if not, let's thank Babu again. Okay.